Hey guys, Cordite here. Welcome back to the video. Today we're going to play some more Old School Dungeons and we're taking a look at Midgrow Warrior. So, I missed my Saturday upload last week, so apologies about that. I was really fucking busy last week. I didn't have time to prepare any videos, which is why instead we're doing this on Wednesday. Wednesday's normally the day where I upload like the random stuff if I have anything prepared. Uh, so, instead, gameplay video. I got you guys covered. I really do hate missing weeks, especially just down to personal life stuff. Uh, not, it's not that I didn't want to upload or wasn't playing the game or anything like that. Well, I haven't been playing the game, so it's, it's, it's not that I didn't want to play the game, basically. But uh, we're back with a bit of mid grow Warrior. Warrior's not a class I've played in the channel yet. I've been trying to get around to all the classes I haven't played yet. Um, which is why I covered Telvanni going back last week or the week before. Uh, I've, I I need to look into like Ebonheart and Dominion yet. I think they're like the only two colors I haven't played, or the only two uh, classes I haven't played yet. So we'll get around to them eventually, but... Uh, this is what I felt like playing this week, something a little bit more aggressive, uh, but while also maintaining my absolute undying love for mid-range. <laughs> so, these kind of mid lord decks tend to want to play very aggressively on uh, turns 1, 2, and 3, uh, and beyond that, they tend to try to uh, lock the opponent out of the game using things like Withered Hand Cultist uh, to lock them out of actions and prevent, uh, prevent interaction, basically, uh, and then just snowball the advantage with bigger stat lines, such as Bleak Coast Troll, Soul Revenge, uh, and still to provide extra burn damage while also keeping the hand stock with things like Triumph and Jarl. Uh, Garneg also a huge key to locking out control decks from being able to interact with you, uh, locking them to 7 Magicka, especially when most of the control decks in the metagame are ramp based. Uh, locking them to 7 Magicka tends to just slice their mana base in half, uh, which in general, like if combined with, uh, with the Hand Cultist, means they can only cast a Javelin and that's their turn. Uh, so yeah. It, it, this deck lives or dies by its turn 1, 2, and 3, essentially. Uh, but the deck is pretty solid. I've been playing it for the last, like, day or so. Just getting to grips with it. And uh, it feels solid. The deck feels pretty solid. Like I said, it's a relatively standard aggressive list that just tends to curb a little bit higher into your Cradle Crushes to help you get, a, like, a little bit of recovery late game if, you're, if you start losing board control. Uh, Sill can just provide that extra damage late game. Yarl keeps her hand full, and Belligerent Giant is just a phenomenal card currently. It helps bounce gates, it deals with supports, um, and it's just a huge body with breakthrough, which means guards cannot stop it. It has to be removed immediately, uh, especially when you're playing a deck this aggressive. Uh, so yeah, overall, I'm re I'm very happy with the list. There's a lot of changes you could make. You could like go for a more standardized mid range list, drop some of like the two drops like Circle Initiate. And, uh, and go for like Ash Berserkers and a few other things just for like extra card draw and a little bit more mid game value. Uh, I don't think we need it though. Currently, the mid or the the meta game is kind of aggressive, and the only control decks are quite greedy, which means we can tend to get under them quite easily, as well as fighting for the board very effectively against Aggro and Dwemer, thanks to our just ridiculously good stat lines uh, on average. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the list. Feels very solid. So uh, without further ado, like, comment, subscribe. Onto some games. Neo Mac Knight on Telvanni. Talvani is probably the the roughest matchup for us, especially when they're on the ring. It means we are very much relying on finding a two drop that's not weak to negation. It also means that I'm probably ditching this haunting spirit, and I can't keep Soul Revenge because I need to find a two drop. See, the problem: most of my two drops are really weak to negation. The only one that's not weak technically is Dragon Tail. So Dragon Tail server would be ideal. Skinned Hound, it's not the worst, It's it does die to negation, which is the the main issue. Rabbit Shot rounding out the hand a little bit. This is likely just going to get negated here. I smell the stench of the living. It doesn't, it survives. Uh I could wrap a shot and take the trade, like right now. Or I could develop one of these two mammoths. I think I develop one mammoth and then next turn wrap shot second mammoth. I don't mark the damage. This way my uh skin town technically survives. Sure. Wrong place. That's fine. This works out really well for me, actually. Uh, 
We're either gonna cult this for next turn alongside Stormcloak Vanguard. He probably takes double trade into a mammoth and maybe bolts the second one. Either way, he's facing down two four fours right now. Kills one, is he gonna bolt the other? No man can deny his destiny. Martin Septim. The Nords must take back Skyrim. The Walker watches over me. Okay. It's a little bit awkward. Martin's just so much bigger than everything else. <laughs> God, 3 7 such an insane stat line. He can't take the risk of floating the Magicka here. Just because I'm probably just going to kill it next turn. I technically don't even have to put my uh, Cultus in danger. Because I can just Gatekeeper if he takes. If he, if he bumps the Mammoth, I just Gatekeeper. The uh, three one. He has he has to mark the damage on this cultist though, right? He kind of has to, which is a little bit annoying. It means we lose it to a ice storm. Oh, he doesn't. That's pretty good. So he's 6 mana, 7 with the ring next turn. It means he can't Ice Storm me this turn. Which means I get to kill this goal face for 3. Develop a win keep. Get to keep my Cultus at full health. So it doesn't die to the Ice Storm that's coming up in the next turn or two. Which is super important. We also have Belligerent Dying next turn if he tries to play anything big. Triumph and Yarl if we need to. Necro's back a Harpy. Would be Magus. Shackles down a Mammoth. Alright, we're probably going to get Ring Ice Stormed. So I'm just going to play it like this. This way he has to... I think this is the best way to play around the, the Ice Storm next turn. It means my cultist survives. Which can be very frustrating for Tilvani to deal with. Sim is a great pickup. Sim is a really good pickup. Just going to ring Ice Storm. That's the big question. He could have a Viper. He has the Viper, and that's fine. Cultus survives. You die today. Enjoy the next life, fool. Motherless dog. We still sim this again, playing around Ice Storm. And I play Jarl in the shadow to play around Brahmin. This way shadow lane is technically more damage, but field lane is also a lot more frustrating. Sure. Necro Amulet, I'm just gonna giant that I think. Never mind, don't have to do anything because he's dead. Poggers. <laughs> we were likely, if he had a prophecy, he'd likely just going to belligerent that anyway. GG. Ooh, Tribunal. Hello. 183. It's probably mid range. It's very likely mid range. So, this is another matchup where we have to play a little bit around Ice Storm and Negation. Skin Town is not ideal, but we have to keep it. Savior is perfect.
All right, mid-range tribunal is a little bit rough, I think. They deal quite well with what we want to be doing. Uh, I'm actually going to lead Dragon Tail Savior here, because I'm probably going to more cool it next turn. Because if I'm more cool with Skin Town, I'm getting basically two for one off of a negation. Because I lose the buff, at least Savior survives. I'd be left with a two one. Are we gonna ring a dagger fall though? Watch yourself now. No, I just warcrafter. Close ranks, let nothing through. Make your peace, dog. I'm just gonna curve out a little bit. I can use skin town to keep my uh my savior out of range of a few things. Probably gets bolted here maybe. It doesn't. That is, uh, that is very good. The issue now is... I'm one damage off clearing that. I can skin town bump it. It sets me up for a double trade next turn. He does gain back four health, that's fine. If I lose field control, I can at least cradle crush in t at like a turn's time. I think getting the damage marked on it is better than not having it marked at all because I can still crash a uh, Stormcloak Vanguard into it. So I think I value having the damage marked on it. Trades. Probably see a Hive Defender or something come down here. Your coin or your life. Choose. Grave Life or Brigand, sure. Rapid Shot that because I'm about to play a Withered Hand Cultist. We must remain steadfast. Potentially gives us a favorable. Through peace, ferocity. Monastic Champion. What's yours is mine. Good card. You have met your end. All right. This sucks a little bit. All right, I can. Uh, this is so risky, but I think I need to do it because I need to get this value from Triumph and Yarrow this turn. Otherwise, I'm never going to get it because I'm just going to take, what, nine here? Not having the ring really hurt us this game. One strike will be all that is needed. What's yours? I don't think I've had the ring in like five videos, which is kind of insane. My luck, my luck of being on the play versus on the draw is actually insane. Uh, Enjoy the next I have no reason to Cradle Crush here. I'll probably just silence this, take this trade, crash Vanguard into it. This should help you die today. The North must take back. Not ideal, but we have to do it. Yeah, we're just taking so much damage. Not having the ring really hurt. Yeah, everything is just slightly too big for Cradle Crush. I think we're we're out of this game. Oh yeah, for sure out of this game now. All right, that's game. That's a rip. Again, no ring just really hurts us that game. I think mid range tribunal is probably our worst matchup. More Telvanni. Alright. It's safe to assume conscription or control. Or some build of either, basically. This hand is okay. And we do actually have the ring. I, I, I'm pretty sure if I go back and check my last couple of videos, this is like the first time I've had the ring in like four videos. Which is so stupid. <laughs> 
All right. I can lead Windkeep, but it probably gets negated. If I lead Dragon Tail Savior, he probably leads Harpy. Or Fighters Guild Recruit. That's like the worst outcome. There is a card that deals with like all of this in his deck. It's probably better we get the negations out of him early. Yeah. Another one. Like, Windkeep plays so well into everything except negation. Just sucks that I've played three negation decks back to back. Yeah, alright, this is fine. Alright, second negation blows me out a little bit here, but that's fine. He has to crash and then negate the, uh, the Windkeep. He doesn't. Interesting. Uh, we ring Jarl next turn, which lines up super well into his Ice Storm. Yeah, ring Jarl into ring Belligerent to clear that off. Could also just ring out Sill. I think ringing Sill is better. It's way more pressure. Now this now makes his Ice Storm absolutely terrible. He he literally cannot play Ice Storm here, which I think was his plan. <laughs> We're one off lethal. <laughs> All right, well, good luck, friend. <laughs> and this is why I like Midgrow Warrior. This is the kind of thing it does sometimes. <laughs> it just wins. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Turn six. Feels good. All right. Cardock, oh, no. Another Telvanni player. Everyone's on Telvanni. Oh man. I think Caradoc is playing the Ultra build. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure he might just be playing mid ranger though. All right, we kind of have to ring Windkeep into probably Windkeep into more cool into Ring Sower. So it's a case of, have you got the negation on turn 2 or not? No negation. Vile canker blossom. Not what I meant to do. It's not what I meant to do. I meant to fucking press... Ah! Close ranks. Let nothing through. Oh, misclick. I didn't mean to click... I didn't mean to ring that out. The black hand sees all. Yeah, I absolutely did not mean to ring that out. That's my own fault. You. My that actually might cost me the game. I'm not even kidding. Care to make a friendly way that is so horrendously bad for me. How does he pitch? Death Scythe, yeah. He's on, um, he's on Flesh Atro. I could rapid shot this. The potential of me finding somebody to play off it is incredibly high and sets up for a cradle crush in the following turn. Or I can just drop Sword of Revenge and just curve out. Do you not fear the water? You should. I don't think it's worth setting it up just yet. I need to set up as much early pressure as I can to make this sill as good as I can. Ooh, gatekeeper, that's fine. Good job, I kept the rap shot. Oh, 
That's why Rapid Shot is really good. <laughs> Sadly, though, we, we have a handful of six drops, which is unfortunate considering we don't run all that much at the top end of the curve. On the plus side, these two win keeps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the plus side, these two win keeps are fucking absolute hell for Tilvani to deal with. You know what? I'm totally okay with this Cradle Crush because this lines up horribly for an Ice Storm for him. Vile canker blossom. I'm okay with losing the ward here. Totally okay with that. Bolt off the top, sure. Sure. I'm probably not going to Yarl just yet. We'll get Syl down. He is close to stabilizing, which really hurts. Like this turn, we probably triumph and Yarl and then drop Skin Town alongside. Probably going to get Vipered, if I had to guess. If it's just a. Oh, it's Singleton. I'm sure I don't have any idea who took your coin. He's on Singleton. Interesting. Alright. Well, Yarl for sure here. Alright, Singleton makes this a little bit more interesting then. Means I don't have to worry about one Ice Storm. Only having to worry about one copy of everything is pretty sick. He does have his Necro, which is a little bit unfortunate. Kills the Skin Hound. Or he's got a way of double tapping still here. He might be able to double tap still. Alright, he's got something else for still then. Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, nine. Nine and four is thirteen. Seven to ten. Seven to ten. I can Cradle Crush over here instead of Witherhand Cultist. Can also just kill this, stop him from uh, from blinking it anymore. Because if he's running, he's, he's definitely running a Knight to Remember as well. Like for sure. I have no real good belligerent targets here. Him all the way to Do I play around the one copy of Ice Storm? I just need to apply as much pressure as I can. Like if he's got the Ice Storm, that's fine. He clears off a lot of his own stuff as well. Shall we put in a dishonest day's wear? Squish. Yeah. Squish for four on Sill. No hard feelings, right? You will feed my clan. I'm just gonna belligerent that. Unless he fire blooms, I guess. I oh, can't fire bloom because it costs two. Yeah, I'm just gonna belligerent bounce that. What did he consume? Snake tooth. You have met your end. Ok, 
Okay, sadly the mana tax is no longer a thing. So we can technically, like, Fire Bloom play Morokai, but that's fine. Ice Storm clears off three things here, but I'm still left with, like, 11 damage, so it's still lethal. I've seen the one copy of Bolt out of his deck. I can also potentially kill him with a Soul Revenge if I, like, if I crush it with something. You trusted me. Mana Marco grabbing... Cradle Crush. Doesn't quite do it. That does. Okay. So no prophecy. Yeah. Well thought. Uh, we can just do this. This. Sweet. GG. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe is Legend for the Month. If it would load. <laughs> and voila! <laughs> oh no, wait, we're not Legend. Fuck! Oh, we are Legend. It just didn't show me. Yeah, okay. Sweet. <laughs> a little bit confused there for a second. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, deck is a lot of fun. Deck is super solid. Clearly, it's capable of hitting legend. So, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. I recommend checking out Midgrow decks. They're actually a lot of fun to play. They're very surprisingly flexible for aggressively minded decks. Uh, Midgrow Crusader is another very good option uh, for those of you looking to climb. But uh, Midgrow Warrior is just a little bit more resilient, it's a little bit more sticky, which is why I prefer it. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to check out the deck list. Links in the description below. And uh, yeah, catch you guys next time. Peace.